Okay, guys, as your chilled kid, I'm going to walk you through this session with my young dog, Gage, here. Now, Gage is about nine and a half months. He's going to be uh, my Schutz and competition dog, so this is preparing him for that type of work. A lot of people ask me if you can train your own dog to do protection work. If you have to ask, then the answer is no, don't do it. You don't know what you're looking at. You don't know how to read the dog. You don't know how to help the dog when he gets into deep water. And you're probably going to hurt him more than help him by doing this stuff. That being said, I do do a lot of this stuff with my own dogs because it helps prepare them for when they run into the real decoy. Um, whether I'm doing, uh, you know, training dog for sport or police service work doesn't particularly matter. I want to create the foundation for the dog that he understands, you know, what's what the correct behavior is, how to counter, uh, you know, how to pursue, how to grip, uh, how to deal with his arousal, all this stuff we can do. Now for Schutzen, it is a game of drive transitions, okay? Dog has to go into guarding, there's a guarding phase, there's biting, then from the bite there's an out, guard, bite, and so on and so forth, and we transition the dog back and forth, and for many dogs, especially dogs that don't have a good foundation, they really struggle with these drive transitions, the stress of having to not bite and instead bark and then transition from that barking to the biting, um, especially for a lot of dogs that don't have a good foundation in the drive transitions, um, you know, it, it really becomes very difficult for them. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Can you train your own dog to do real protection work, like real bite work? Uh, you can, again, lay the foundation, but you cannot train your dog to bite for real on yourself. I think that's a very uh, dangerous road to go down um, because at the end of the day, there's a certain level of pressure in protection work. And you don't want your dog to believe that the solution to pressure from you is to bite you. Uh, that's not a good idea at all. So even for my dog here, he's going to be a sport dog, but he's going to have some real hashtag real training and I'm going to be using another uh, decoy for that type of stuff but I'm going to do all the foundation myself so anyways we're going to make the barking here I put the sleeve on the ground and I have the e-collar and the whip in my hand I am tapping him from time to time with the e-collar I'm starting to condition him to bark on the e-collar there uh, just a little bit on a low level and you'll notice me moving my head um, when he's barking to get his attention up I also mark the success of the barking and the transition with the e-collar tapping which you saw with the red light there and again now i put the whip up a little bit to get his attention a little higher and again moving my head when he barks in my face tapping him on the head with the lash to notify him that, that it is a drive transition i also yell and tap him with the e-collar so again asking for that drive transition and there it is head was down a little bit then he looked up in my face barked and marked that instantly and went to the prey transition he made it nicely he pursued the sleeve and he bit you'll notice i never give him the sleeve right away i make him chase it from side to side and make him miss it a few times and then i give him the grip this ensures that the grip is nice and firm here i'm trying to stimulate a little pulling because he is a thrashy puppy uh, he really wants to thrash it he's not messing with his grips which is good there's no munchiness he's got nice firm hard grips um, which is exactly what i want partially genetic partially formed by me um, here once he has the sleeve even when it's on your arm he is a thrasher so right here now i'm working if you remember my prey pyramid uh, video watch it if you don't um, the arousal is the barking the pursuit is me making him miss the sleeve from side to side um, the gripping part is what we're working on now uh, or the, the possession part is what we're working on now once he has the sleeve i want him to possess it I don't want him to want to give it up. Now, again, that thrashiness, <laughs> you can see, like, if I grab that, it feels like he's going to break my wrist. He just thrashes the crap out of that sleeve, which is a good thing. I mean, I like the intensity. Um, I'm going to make that pulling later. You can see for the whip stimulation, some dogs on the whip stimulation will pull. He does not. Um, he just gets a little more thrashy. So here I'm asking him to lie down, just calm down, think between reps here. And then I'm going to give him the signal. Uh, verbal signal and physical signal. I put the e-collar down because I'm not just don't have the hands for it right now. I'm just going to work on this barking here. And again, you'll notice when he's barking good in my face, I react by moving my face, tap him on the head with the lash. Um, and what that does is for dogs that are prone to being stick shy, um, that I always add, and even if a dog is not, I just make sure, you know, that they don't have a problem with the whip or with the stick by tapping them when they're successful um, on the head with the lash. It's not a hard whack or anything. And it just helps the dog and preps the dog to believe that instead of, oh no, I'm getting 
you know, whacked with this thing, oh, that means actually something good's about to happen. So I'm classically conditioning. Oh, there, that was beautiful. So you can see there, the rhythm changed. So his barking, the problem with his barking is with like really intense young dogs, what is he doing? He's going, ba 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 It's like a machine gun, his barking, right? And he's not settling into the rhythm. There, that last rep, he started to find a rhythm. Ba, 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 ba. And immediately I marked that behavior, rewarded him with a prey transition. And now again, we're working that grip and trying to get some pulling. You can see with this puppy, he's just not gonna pull nice. I have a plan for the pulling though. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lengthen that chain so that I can get his front feet off the table. And I'm just gonna pull him so his front feet start coming off the table. You're gonna see how quickly he starts pulling back. And then I'm gonna reward that by giving him possession of the sleeve. Once he has the sleeve, again, we're gonna work on him being calm. We don't want too much crazy with a young dog like this. There's a lot of fire there and we don't want it to burn out of control. So now he's been successful. He's gonna have that, that time to just possess the sleeve, to hold the sleeve, and to work on that grip. You know, uh, it's really easy to get a dog like this super nasty and super unclear. I wanna keep him really clear. The clearer he is, the more powerful he's going to be. I don't want him thrashy, I don't want him crazy. I want him calm and that's what we're working towards. I'm working towards him finding his rhythm in the barking. I'm working towards him getting uh, calmer and, and, and stronger on the grips. Um, you know, but for his age, he's doing fantastic. Here he wants to get up a lot because he wants to kind of restart the fight, but I'm saying, no, 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 lie down and wait. I don't want him too uh, hot to trot, so to speak, because that's gonna cause me problems down the road. Anyways, that's the end of the first session.